guys got your seat belts on? Anybody? How's everybody doing? Anybody in the storms tonight? They're pretty rough. They are really rough. Of course, you can tell I've been uh, doing things. And you, you know what, people? You know what tonight is, right? Today, today is Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. Yes, and I do not look like those uh, rabbits. Weird Wednesday. You know what? I want you guys, we're going to talk about some subjects today because here's the deal. Everybody can sense that within the last couple days, three, four days, something different has been transpiring. In fact, people have found themselves not interested in the news in this new place, in a very new place. And they're attempting to find out these stories in the news. But for some reason, they're not holding. Uh, it's just not as interesting as it was. Anybody else feeling that? I believe that's a change in the spirit. Something we're being, we're being armed with. Now, you know what? Every time, every single time that people, believers, are armed with um, something new, that means a new situation is also coming. Don't take it lightly, but understand that you're being matured and given something for a reason. Because certainly we are entering some uncharted days. I think it's important that people understand that in the Bible, it specifically said that it was never a time like it in the past. Even unto this day, nor will it be in the future. That means you cannot compare what is taking place to the past. You can't do it. And a lot of times we draw conclusions of what's happening today from the past. The old adage, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. That won't work in this case. It doesn't work. This is new territory. So it won't work. A great many people will attempt to make it work and they're failing, and failing miserably. Because now the nations are in a type of distress that no one's ever seen before. Nations, previous alliances are being broken very quickly. New alliances are being formed very quickly. And so we're in new, a new territory. This is something new. We must remind ourselves of Matthew 24, which is uh, um, very good, by the way, so that we can arm ourselves properly and keep our focus. As being Weird Wednesday, we are going to discuss some subjects that nobody else normally discusses. They don't. They just simply don't. But I'll tell you this. Make sure that your questions do uh, edify the body. I'll tell you what, when you're talking about a subject in the entire body, cannot use it. It's a, it, what good is that subject? What good is that? So if you have some questions, if you have some questions, just make them known. I will certainly answer them to the best of my ability. Folks, before we start, let's say a prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Last night we covered some subjects regarding scoffers and mockers and those who we, you know, trying to come into the body of Christ and, and, and cause division and so forth. And the scripture for uh, conveying true wisdom from above is found in James chapter 3. Uh, that would be 13, uh, I believe 13 through 18. And uh, it, it really defines wisdom from the world and its results and wisdom from above and its results. Because normally when wisdom comes from above, it's very peaceful in nature. It's, it's extremely effective. Um, it does not cause divisions and strifes. However, worldly wisdom causes strifes and envies. It makes one want to retaliate and everything else. 
and we don't want to go there with them. People have a root of bitterness already, and when you feed that bitterness through conversation, well, the end result is, is just conflict. We want to avoid that conflict, and the Lord taught us how to do that. Now, the greater question here tonight is, do you all know what you're stepping into? Do you know what you're stepping into? One of the true current conditions of our world in relation to Revelation is that the beast system, the blueprints are finished, the construction is on the way. They probably did not inform the public that the deadline, the deadline for people being marked is 2017. A great many people will take this lightly, but they don't know if some people have the chip already. It is not an RFID chip. It's not. That's not what it is. You couldn't imagine what this chip is. It almost looks like a piece of small tape, tiny tape. Now, they're going to make everybody change their identification cards first. They will consolidate the data on a card. The cards will then be taken away, transferred into a mark very small. This mark will contain your biological data. This mark will allow computers to understand your thoughts, your ambitions, what you're likely to do, what your true belief is, and so forth. It's technology. They have mapped the human brain waves. They have done this. They know exactly they know the language, the common language of the brain. Your thought processes are not that complicated. The only thing they cannot read are your spiritual communications. Not with your mouth. But there are different brainwave patterns that take place when a person is praying. And it's very difficult for them or any computer to figure that out. Your intentions, yes, they can figure that out. They most certainly can. The computer has mapped that. Now, if a device, if a device can read your brain patterns and it's attached to your body, attached to your nerve endings, if it can read that, it can also stimulate patterns within your mind. Now, we know the beast will have the power to make as many as do not worship him die. The beast will have that power. Or I'll say worship it. Because the Antichrist is going to make everybody worship the first beast. So we're looking at technological breakthroughs that a great many people, they, they simply do not realize it exists. As I told you before, some of the information that will be coming out will hit us from all directions. From man's accomplishments and failures to the destabilization of our planet. It's going to come from all directions. It's, you need to be armed and ready for any type of scenario. Now, this is Weird Wednesday, and we're going to talk about some of those scenarios as it relates to the body, as it relates to the Word of God. It can help the body of Christ. These are things people don't normally think of. They don't normally think of it. And you know what? I'll give you an example. We do this a lot, by the way. We impose situations on trainees. We place them in positions, and they have no idea they're being tested. You see, because they will train for a mission. That's fine. But what happens when a situation forms in the course of your average day? How will they react then? Will they still have that same confidence? We have discovered that in the mental preparations for a condition, you can prepare. But the ideal soldier is always prepared. An ideal operative is always prepared. In the body of Christ right now, people say, yes, I'm going to stand firm in that day. But right now, on this day, they're falling apart. 
yet they boast and claim they're going to stand in the day that's far off. But they can't deal with the day they're given. This is something that has to reverse. Can you guys see that? See, we struggle with things that we can't overcome now. How can we stand when the real trouble comes? No one really talked about these subjects because they want to boost the morale of most people, and I can understand that. But what today we're going to talk about right now in our situations, you see, at some point we have to understand our true preparedness state. We have to understand that if we're not prepared right now, we can't stand in the future. You can build a mental mind state and fail if you have not trained. Every situation you've gone through in life, which is called a trial, was your training. What happens to a soldier that has an excuse to get out of training all the time? He's ineffective when the actual operation begins. He's ineffective. He'll become a casualty. Your trials and tribulations in life are your training. But what have we actually done with our trials and tribulations? We have cried, we have whined, we have not overcome, yet we boast we're going to stand firm in that day. Yet we can't stand right now. This has to reverse. You see, you're something much more than what the enemy has told. Old people gain their identity from their surroundings, from other people. You can feel great on the inside. One person can come against you say that you're weak and this, that, and the other, and guess what? It affects you. You need to become a fortress, a fortress of truth, that the words of men do not penetrate you. In order to do that, you have to change your vision. You also have to change your expectations. You have to. It's time for us to understand what this life is and its detail so that we're not blinded by the enemy anymore. The enemy is allowed to do what he does for the training of the children. Can you guys understand that? You're protected in your trials. But you're to prepare for the future. You can overcome your situations right now, or you would not be in them. You know what? Somebody today, we, we talked about prayer. We were talking about prayer. I made a statement. I never pray for things for myself. Never. I don't. And the response was, I, I knew it was kind of shocking, because most people, they'll say a little prayer for themselves here and there, right? But I, I just don't do it. I don't do it because I trust what the Father said. I trust his word blindly. I really do. If he says it, I'll accept it. That's the way it is. See, the Lord said he'd supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. He also said, whom he called, he also qualified. That means all qualifications for your calling. He will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. I also know that he asked us to do things. I'm not going to ask him for anything if I step off his path. I'm not. I'll ask him for forgiveness. But he has protected me in the most, the areas where the average person should be severely maimed, wounded, killed, or taken down. But he protects me. I pray for other people. My energy is focused towards others. I understood that I wasn't sent here to pray for myself. See, I have to trust him. You know, it's like a child. Again, I'll use this analogy. You're cooking dinner for the child. You've cooked dinner for the last six years. At 6.30 p.m. every single evening, the child eats at that time, 
and then the child goes to bed. Well, every day you've been cooking. The child sits at the table and says, I'm starving, I'm hungry. When is dinner going to be ready? And they keep coming back in the kitchen. You keep telling them, I'm cooking. And they keep coming back and begging and asking and crying because they're starving to death. You, the parent, you know better. And sure enough, at 6.30, dinner is served. The child eats, he's satisfied, comes back the next day and does the same thing. You see, we do the same thing. God always provides. But we whine and cry and whine and cry, just like that child does. We're saying we're starving, we're dying, and everything else. And the Lord's looking at us like, oh, boy. I love him. That's what he's saying. I love him. They can't do anything for me, but I still love him. Let me feed him. We have to understand that he feeds us. He supplies all of our, he supplies our needs. But we've gotten in the habit of whining and crying based on what we see, our vision. See, that kid does not have the vision of the parent. The parent is always several steps ahead. The kid sees a table with nothing on it, and when he sits at the table because he sees nothing instantly, I'm going to starve to death. That's what the child is thinking. I'm going to. He doesn't know that in five more minutes, mom and dad are going to set the table. The food's going to be put on the place, and he's going to begin to eat. Five minutes. And this kid sits at the table, and it's empty, and he thinks it's over. My life is over. I'm going to starve to death. Now, if a earthly parent will do that, what do you think a perfect parent is doing for you? Now, the older the child gets, he understands, well, they're cooking, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of this responsibility and this response. I know it's coming. I know I'm hungry a little bit, but I can work through it. See, when you mature, you can walk with hunger pains, and you know you're going to get fed. Then you begin to come a little late to dinner. You come a little late because you were preoccupied with something else. That's what happens when you mature. When you mature in the Lord, you do the same thing. He supplies provision, but you're so busy working on a mission for somebody else. You already knew he was going to supply the provision, so it's not a great shocker anymore. You already had the confidence he was going to do it. That's maturity. Some of us are still like that little bitty child that comes in there and sees an empty table and starts to cry because life is over. There's no food. They can smell it, hear it cooking and everything, but they're so focused at the empty table, they cannot see the provision all around them. That's, that is what we do. It's time for us to understand that our Father already has a provision around us. But the provision is given by his timing, not our timing. Would you feed an infant every time it was hungry? Would you feed a child 18 times a day? No. You know what would happen if you did that. Would the child be satisfied for a minute? Over the course of his life, it would destroy him. God's not going to give us anything that's going to destroy us. Sometimes we can look at the natural course of things in life. And we can see the order of God very clearly. We just have to learn to observe, to consider, to meditate on the word day and night, to look for his touch in the world. Understand he is a father, a perfect father. Your love and compassion, that comes from him. Your charity, that comes from him. All of those good things come from him. That comes from him. But we can't cry because now we're facing a new time, a new era. A time where faith will be um, tested 
and test it. The time that we have to overcome those who would mock and scoff us, that's another thing. Don't let your day break down because of a mocker or a scoffer. You know what? The Lord said they would come, didn't he? See, at first it puts a bad taste in your mouth. And you'll say to yourself, I just can't believe this person would do that. Well, the Lord told us these people would come. It shouldn't be a shocker. In fact, they're fulfilling prophecy when they scoff and mock. They fulfill prophecy when they fall away. Is it a good thing? No. But it's to be expected. We have to learn to understand the word of God like children but be mature in our reading. Will people turn on each other? Yes. So expect it. You can't go through life dictating and saying, by your vision, this person will never, ever turn on me. This person will never turn on me. These people are going to like what I'm saying. They'll never send out another message contrary. You'll upset yourself. I told you guys before, I expect everybody I know to backstab me. And you know what? When it happens, I can say, oh, it's okay. We can get beyond this. See, when you're prepared for things like that, you can get beyond it. If you have said in your heart that you know they're human beings and they have a capacity to hurt you in the worst way, when they do it, you can say, oh, it's okay. We can get past this. You can demonstrate love to the person. But if you've convinced yourself nothing can hurt me, well, first, you're speaking against the word of God because the Lord said people would scoff and mock you, talk about you, say all manner of things against you for his sake. You're deluding yourself. You're going against the word of God. But if you say, you know what, they, they can, they're going to backstab me. Somebody's going to backstab me. Somebody's going to scoff me. Somebody's going to do all manner of evil against me. And when it happens... You're prepared. Most importantly, you can forgive. Secondly, it does not affect your walk in Jesus. You can continue in love. Most of the times, if, you're, if you think no one's going to do anything against you, it affects your walk in Christ. You stop everything. You're hurt. You're broken down. You're broken down. I expect family to backstab me. I expect anybody to backstab me so that when it happens, I say, oh, yes, yes. We do that sometimes. That's what I would tell them. I've done that before. And I tell people we can get beyond this. It's not a big deal. Let's go forward. You know what? Because they're human. And so long as you're human, in the moment of your weakness, Satan can use you too against somebody else. In your moment of emotional states, Satan can use you. Believe me, he understands your emotions better than you do. He can, in fact, influence your emotions. He knows how to nudge a person to call you with the bad news at the wrong time to make your day break down. He knows how to do this. I call it Satan's timing. Expect it. Expect it, and then you won't be affected. That's a pretty good term. I might have to write that down and use that past the Paul's room. Expect it and you won't be affected. Too many people are falling because they don't expect it. And it deeply hurts them and they run around with these hurts and pains in their hearts. For what? The sad part is why are they hurting when the word of God said it would happen? That would be like a person breaking down and crying because the moon turned to blood. And when it turns to blood, they say, oh, God, abandon me. No, he already said it would turn to blood. Now, to you, that sounds like, a, well, why would someone do that? I promise you they will. They most certainly will. You know why? They believe in their own interpretation of the Bible. To them, before the moon turns to blood, they were supposed to be raptured. When they're sitting there looking at it, they're going to say, God has abandoned me. I'm telling you what will happen. Because very few people are planning to endure the entire book of Revelation. They think they're going to be out at the beginning. And you know what? One thing I learned in life is it, be ready. Be prepared for the worst of things. And your life will be excited and joyful. 
you got to be prepared for the very worst scenario. And then, when you prepare for the worst, and the Lord pulls you up, you're still full of joy. You haven't lost anything. If you endure everything to the end, you can still do the will of God. Because here's a fact. We don't know who he has appointed to be here during certain times. There was a great many people that came out of great tribulation, a number that no man can number. It's pulled out of great tribulation. It said there was a great many, there was a great number of people. It didn't say everybody. Some of us have had dreams who have soldier minds like me, who are stubborn enough, determined enough to go through this whole thing for the word of God, who have faced death on more than one occasion, who have felt pain and everything else. And believe me, we're not going to stop simply because somebody wants to chop your head off or lock you up in prison. There are some people out there that will still continue. And they too are being prepared to endure the entire thing. But see, it's a matter of trusting God. Just like that small kid sitting at the table with no food, that kid did not trust his parents. You know, I remember doing that myself. That's why I can relate to that so well. I remember sitting at the table feeling abandoned. How crazy is that? You just feel abandoned like your world fell apart. Like everything, it's a darkness that comes over you. Simply because you've come to a table with no place. I remember that. Then you get your food. And you're the happiest person in the world when you're eating. Next day comes and you do the same thing. Oh, I'm starving. I'm going to die if I don't get something to eat. Now, to the kid, the, the emotions and everything are real. All the kid had to do was look up and say, well, they're going to kick dinner. But you know what? A child can't do that. A child has to be, he has to go through conditions like that. So that he learns trust. See, the only way you learn trust is if you go through that situation all the way. I learned the trust that my parents would serve something because they kept coming back. And sure enough, I began to recognize the timing, the rules of feeding and everything else. And I was comfortable. But it, see, I had to understand how my parents were operating. In other words, I had to actually look. Some of us, we don't look. We're so fixated on the empty table, we can't see anything else. When trials and tribulations come, who tries to escape them? You know they're coming, by the way. How many people attempt to escape their trials and tribulations? When something bad happens, you're trying to escape. Not knowing you're in the Father's hands. When a trial comes for me now, you know, the Bible says we can glory in tribulation. I often wondered, do people understand that? I, I just often wondered that. But it's like this. As you become an, can you guys hear me okay? I want you to hear this one too. I'm back at the table again with the parents cooking. As you get older and you're an adult and three or four people are sitting at the table, you know what you do? You begin to enjoy yourself before dinner served. Why do you enjoy yourself? Because you understand all the conditions. Once you understand all the conditions, you know exactly what's happening. You can enjoy yourself before dinner served. But the whiny kid, if they have little ones and you're an adult, you can watch your whiny kid throwing a conniption fit. Like they're going to die. But you know they're not. To the kid, it does not matter because all the kid can see is an empty place. When we go through trials and tribulations and we understand the conditions, first we need to understand that they're from the Lord for our benefit. That's why he said all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord who will call according to his purpose. 
That's why I said we can glory in tribulation. That's why I said that. Because we're in his operation at that. He's doing something at that time. And when things go wrong in my life, when it's a trial, I often look around to see what I can learn. I'm very nosy. The world could be breaking down and falling apart all around me. I want to know everything about the process. I learned processes in a trial and tribulation. That's called training, by the way. Once you learn those processes, you're going to find out something I did too. It's very difficult to learn the Lord's processes unless you're back in a trial again. In fact, if I go a length of time and nothing, no trials are coming, I feel out of place. I'm not learning. I'm not learning. Now, that may seem backwards to most of you all, but that's a fact. I need as much training as I can get. That's why when, see, I can stand firm in a trial. I can. I can stand firm. It does not penetrate me. I can stand firm in a trial, take notes. I take notes in a trial. I like to see processes. You know, everything is a process because we serve a God of order. Our Lord is not chaotic. The world is chaotic, not the Father. Folks, we're going to take a small break. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to bore you. I'll be right back. We're going to take a small, small, small break. By the way, you all know what that said. I think she was, what that was saying was, the hot dogs are good. Something like that. Anyway, okay, now we're back. Am I boring anybody? Don't let me bore you. Somebody had a weird question in there earlier. We'll answer that last. But, um, it's so much going on. Folks, I want, you know what I want you, I, I really do, from my heart. I want you prepared for some of the things that I know for a fact. And it's not speculation. It's not uh, doom and gloom. It's reality. I want you prepared for things as best as you can be prepared for them. Now, I know the best way to prepare is through the Word of God. Second way to prepare is to mentally meditate on the Word of God. You have to mentally meditate. Think of the worst case scenario. Get used to things. You know, my life is always full of joy. One, I do not expect good things to happen. I let things happen. I don't predict my own future. I know that I'm in a spiritual battle, a perpetual spiritual battle. Even when I'm fighting spiritually, I can still have joy. My joy is not affected. You guys, through the course of years, if it lasts that long, you're going to find me an individual who is the same way all the time. The same way. You'll also learn that I've overcome a great many things. But the power of love itself is, a, is the key to overcoming. See, you're an overcomer. You're not, you don't slither out of situations. You overcome them. You guys ever thought of that? What is your testimony? What is your story? What's your story? Do you ever contemplate on those things the Lord delivered you out of? You see, because everybody looks for strength to continue the next day. Part of your strength lies in your memory of what the Lord delivered you out of. Okay, now look, we're going to have some questions here. So here's what we're going to do. When somebody asks a question, right, slow down on uh, posting. I'll try to catch the question, and um, we'll address it, okay? Just give, like, if somebody asks a question, please recognize they did and stop typing for at least, you know, five seconds so I can read it. Then we can answer it. Do 
JC, who is that from? Is that from yourself? Okay, stop posting. Let's see. When I'm in the trial, the first thing I ask when I'm supposed to be learning. And, oh, I missed it. Here's where this part is and this part of this part. Okay, you know what? When you're in a trial, don't figure. You know what? That's a that's an issue that many people have. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. From the heart, stop trying to figure everything out. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't try to figure everything out. Is that really going to help you if you figure everything out? You know what? People do that with news stories. They try to figure everything out. And you know what they do? They start chasing. You don't want to chase. When you're in a trial, you simply learn. The Lord has set the timing on it. You'll be delivered out of it. But in all cases, he's demonstrating things to you in the trial. It's also exercising your faith. It's also giving you patience. It restores the hope that's within you. It makes sense. However, however, in a trial, the learning process, the, it's a learning process, not to, it's a learning process on how the Lord works, not what we can figure out. How the Lord works, this causes trust to be built. Trials and tribulations are sent for very specific reasons. Very specific. Kim, that's a, that's a medical question. But you know what? That's a medical question, but even in your situation where the implant is in there, that's a medical question. You know what you're going to have to do, Kim? You're going to have to exercise your faith in the Father, which means trusting him in all situations. In order to exercise your faith, it has to be tested. If your faith is tested, the Lord has you in a situation. Yeah, you know what? When we're all going through trials and tribulations, we have our earthly knowledge of how we deal with that trial and tribulation. But then there's also instructions from the Father of what we do in those trials and tribulations. The first and the, the most important part is to learn w why we are given trials and tribulations. Because all of us are going to go through trials and tribulations. All of us are. Every single last one of us. But they're coming and they will increase. They're for you. Trials and tribulations are for the individual to prepare you. Now, I can tell you this. If you're going through a trial, you need to really think about what the Lord is attempting to show you based on the Word of God. It's going to have to, you're going to have to read to get that. You're going to have to read to get that. Once you understand it, you'll understand a great many things. It does no good for me to understand it for you. You have to see it. You have to see it yourself. How do you prepare for straight line winds? That's a doozy. You know what? Everybody un underestimates. Did you guys see the damage the hail did to the homes when the hail fell? The hail was the size of a softball. I believe uh, yesterday on Pastor Paul's show, I said there would be hail the size of a cantaloupe. Did you guys see the actual damage it caused to homes and everything else? Almost like it was a demonstration. The homes that it hit... I was nosy. I wanted to know what kind of people they were. I did. I'm going to be honest with you. I want to know what kind of people they are. Well, I found out what type of people they were. It's not that they're bad people, but they trust in possessions. That's what they trust in. They trust in possessions. You know what? I'm convinced of something. If a person is a Christian and they're in the middle of a storm, the Lord's protection is over them always. 
I'm convinced of that. I've seen, there are too many stories I've seen where tornadoes have skipped homes and everything else. Tatum, let's see. Uh, when people spread a rumor of things about you and hurt, how would you handle it? And when there is no proof, and they are being used by the evil one to upset me. Well, first of all, you have to expect people to do that. Do you know how many rumors there are about me? Here's one rumor. You ready? I don't exist. I'm a computer program. That's one rumor. Second rumor is this. I'm out to get people that are on uh, blog talk, like the Hagmans, and I'm out to get Pastor Paul and trying to get Steve Quayle. Weird stuff, right? These are the rumors. Second rumor is, I'm a uh, third rumor, I'm a fallen angel. I thought they were bound myself, fallen angels. I, you know, the Lord said they were bound until judgment, so I'd be, you know, but that's them. The, sec the uh, fourth one is, well, let's see, I was a professional hacker. Yeah, then I worked for the NSA. Then I was Snowden's friend. It, just weird stuff. And, you know, Satan does these things, right? They can't get to me directly. These things cannot get to me directly. They can't touch me. Why? Because I expect them. And I'm on a different path. Somebody could say that straight to my face. They can say, you are phony. I'd say, well, thank you. Now, let me go back to my business. They could do that. But if I stopped and, and you know, thought about it, said, wow, the world. See, here's a mistake. Off one people's rumor, don't you ever think, oh, well, this is the way the world perceives me wrong. This world is soon to be put in utter chaos. And believe me, a rumor is going to be the last thing these people need. And you guys are right. I'm a very busy person. I really don't have time for that. But guess what? You guys should be busy too because you have a lot of preparations to do. How many of you believe that we're in the end days? How many? Just type yes. If you believe that you're in the end days, you have a lot of preparation to do, do you not? Do you really have time to worry about what somebody else is saying? Because here's a wake-up call. When these things begin to happen, everybody's going to be displaced. Is it going to matter who started the rumor? Is it going to matter that you are vindicated because you said something that was right? None of that is going to matter. None of it. Time is extremely short. We have to prepare by the word of God. How many of you know how to deal with a demon? By the word of God, not by your own intellect. Not by thinking that what works for one demon will work for another. Because they learned that lesson in the New Testament. The Lord said, no, no, no. This one takes prayer and fasting. Right? Two more in the Bible went up to a demon and got beat up. You don't want to be those people. You don't want to get beat up by a demon. So you have to prepare. Your, there's so much we have to prepare for. All this time that nothing has happened, nothing has, I mean, nothing has happened. I'm comparing it to what is going to happen. I'm telling you now, nothing has happened. The wars are nothing. Massive deaths are nothing compared to what's going to take place. Death is a way out. That's what death is. Death is a way out. But a great many people won't be able to die. And you got to ask yourself, what is that phenomenon? How can you be stuck here on earth and you're not able to die? Is a new ID card the mark of the beast? Well, you know what? Part of preparation again. These, these cards are international cards. Or let's just say they're, they're cards with global information. These cards will be part of the construction of the beast system. Now, listen, it, the Bible is specific. You won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. That's control mechanism. That's what it is. Why do you not want to take the mark? Because in order to take the mark, you have to denounce Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you that right now. You're going to have to denounce that Jesus is Lord. That's why you're condemned if you take the mark. There's no way you can take the mark and still believe Jesus is Lord. You're going to have to take the Luciferian initiate. Does that make sense to you all? Because that's what's going to happen. We saw that when the beast fell, when he gave great, his seat great power and authority, Satan gave his seat great power and authority to the beast. 
these nations, they had the power, satanic power, and the world worshipped who? They worshipped the dragon, they gave the beast the power, and they worshipped the beast. That means that people who are going to be left behind are going to worship Satan. They're going to worship Satan. All this time, since the, the uh, 1920s, they've been talking about a utopia, absent any believer in Christ. In order to take the mark, you're going to have to take the Luciferian initiative. And what did the Lord say? Everybody who's not written in the Lamb's Book of Life will take the mark of the beast. Which means if your name is in the Lamb's Book of the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to take the mark. So something else took place there, right? Something else took place. But everybody whose names is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will take the mark of the beast. And listen, he's not going to trick you into taking it. He's going to cause people to take it. Cause is a forceful action. They're not going to trick you into getting the mark. They're not going to nicely ask you because it specifically says those who refuse to take the mark, the beast has power to kill them. Period. Period. Now, I want you to understand something. Satan gave the beast, not the Antichrist, the beast. The beast and the Antichrist are two different things, okay? Two different beasts. You guys aware of that? Satan falls. And he gives his seat, his power and authority, over to the beast. Now, he gave his seat. What seat? Pay attention, please. He gave the beast his seat, power, and great authority. If he gave the beast his seat, power, and great authority, and, these, this, and they said, who can make war against the beast? That means Satan's seat power and great authority is right here on earth it's just not fully manifested you see because he cannot manifest so he gives that power to something in, in that is not like him but it's in human form called the beast a collection of nations let me tell you something demons work the same way they cannot touch you directly but they can jump into another person and make them do things to you it's almost like a law that if you belong to jesus christ no demon, no principality or power can touch you. That was established by Jesus Christ. Jesus said, all spirits are subject unto you through his name. You have power to tread upon scorpions and serpents. You have power over all the power of the enemy. It also means, he said, don't, don't be glad that all spirits are subject unto you. Because they came back, they were happy. Even the spirits, are, even the demons are subject unto us. The Lord said, don't be happy about that so much. It's that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you know what happens? Darkness is attracted to darkness. A demon can't find his way into it. Did you notice the disciples that went out there? They didn't have to worry about the demon jumping in them. They know, certainly noticed Jesus. What have we to do with you, Jesus? They noticed other disciples too. Jesus didn't go through a ritual and all this. He'd be, get out of him. The disciples, get out of him. They didn't go through all these rit rituals and candles and put smoke all in the room and this, that, and the other. If you have authority, you have authority. Period. We'll get into that, Moxie. We'll get into that. But the most important thing is, if you're written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. Now, it's funny that it's funny that when he caused everybody to take the mark of the beast, they were all worshiping Satan. You know, that tells us what was happening. What do you see in the world now? What do you guys see in the world now? You see people in governments drifting away from the Word of God calling it mythology and they're becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah all over again 
Satan's seat, power, and great authority is right here on earth. It's right here on earth. That's where his seat, his power, and great authority is, right here on earth. Even the Bible tells us we war not against the flesh, but principalities and powers in high places. Where do you think that comes from? Satan. That comes from Satan. Satan has been here in the garden. He was back and forth to earth when Job was here. Back and forth to earth to the throne, to earth to the throne. In Revelation, when he gets cast out, the heavens rejoiced because he was cast to earth. He couldn't go back to the throne. When he found out he was cast to earth, he was mad and upset. And the Bible clearly said he was right there choosing the brothers, the Ani, but he'll be cast to earth. That's why I said, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For Satan has been cast down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time. Let me remind you, for an angel to give, for somebody in heaven to give three woes in one, that's terrible. Let me tell you why it's terrible. The last three trumpets, one woe apiece. Right? Apollyon, who had the key to the bottomless pit, opened the pit. The smoke blotted out the sun and everything else, and these critters came out, tortured men for five months. It said that in those days men would seek death and would not find it. That's the first one. Second one, four angels are loosed in the great rivers Euphrates, and a 200 million component army came out for the slave one third of men. And the men that were not slain didn't hands or of their sorceries or anything else. That was the second woe. Third woe was Satan being cast to the earth. And then an angel cries out, whoa, 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 three woes. So when Satan gets here, he gives his power over to the beast system, which is already created. And then the Antichrist is born out of the land, out of the people, again, it makes everybody worship the beast. It makes everybody worship that system. And then he makes everybody get a mark. This antichrist is going to rise. He has supernatural powers. This antichrist is going to rise. It's not merely a person. This antichrist is going to rise. It's going to have supernatural gifts and powers and great authority, both in the heavens and the earth and on the earth. He's going to do great wonders. And a lot of Christians will be deceived at that time. They will still yet be that the world will be deceived. You guys can hear me okay? Yes, no, maybe so. Who did it? Am I still on there? Oh, okay, I'm on there. Good. You guys aren't bored yet, right? You know what, when it comes to, is the Antichrist here or not? Before the Antichrist gets here, right? Part of the beast system is something you couldn't possibly imagine. The only reason I'm saying this is because a lot of people think it's going to be a system just with the average ordinary people doing it wrong. I can tell you that now, wrong. You're not going to believe what the beast system is. And yes, the, everybody in the world is going to say, who can make war with the beast? Because you're not going to believe what will reside in these nations very shortly. You just simply won't believe it. You're not going to believe it. There's a supernatural component. A dimensional door is going to be opened. What sits on the other side of that dimension will pour into this earth. When that happens, a great many things in the earth will be released. They'll take their positions as true leaders. But you see, one of the heads, one of the nations, one of the leading components of the beasts were wounded. The head does not indicate a person, by the way. If you study the book of Daniel, 
you'll understand that the heads represent a kingdom or a country. There are a great many things happening that no one understands. There are natural doorways on Earth that go in and out to other dimensions. People disappear and come back horrified. Some don't come back at all. You're going to find that one day mythology actually had it right. It will stretch a little bit in the truth. But supernatural things were here on Earth before. Chimeras were here before. The bones are everywhere. They call them dinosaurs. That's what they call them. They'll never tell you how certain of these dinosaurs were constructed. What type of DNA? How can you dig up a dinosaur bone that has human DNA? That's what I want to know. How did that happen? How did they find a dinosaur frozen? Take the bone marrow out. And it's good DNA. They can see, uh oh, this has human DNA. What in the world is this for? Because, see, they painted a picture in your mind that, yes, the world was full of great big lizards. Well, that's true. Some of those lizards had human DNA. Why? All of the bones are irradiated. Why? Why are all the bones radioactive? Why were they all crushed? Smash, fossilized. That can only happen under a great, enormous amount of pressure and dirt and displacement of dirt. They found out they were radioactive because they had to put paint on them to shield anyone from that radiation. They're still radioactive. So they make copies of the bones, then display them. Very few people know that. Why would a lizard have two vocal cords? What is that all about? Why would a lizard have two vocal cords? Why would a very tall human have um, a set of two distinct vocal cords? Why? Gary, I'll tell you why they're radioactive. When these Nephilim were in the earth, God gave instructions to Noah to build the ark, and he sent the Nephilim one against the other. They had war. They had nuclear wars here on Earth. That's why you see in India, there are certain places in India nobody can go through, go to, because they're highly radioactive even to this day, highly. And the stone was turned to glass. All their stone structures, the top seven inches were turned to glass. There are other places in the world the same thing happens. Under the ocean, there are a great many places that are radioactive. They're hiding these things from you, so you can never, ever put a picture to the, together. They even documented the wars. You see, to us, in the Bible, they called them Nephilim, right? To the, in India, you can read it in the Mahabharata. They're flying all through the skies and shooting at each other and everything else. Lord Krishna, whoever his name was, these are Nephilim, men of renown in the earth. Things and critters and stuff was all over this place. There are domes that they find inside the earth all the time with libraries of what happens. Explain that one. How do you find a 60,000-year-old computer system with no keys activated by certain types of DNA with the library? Of everything. And only a certain person with a certain type of DNA can enter it and open those doors. Anybody else attempts to do that, they'll be fried attempting to go in. So, anyway, those things are documented in more than one area. But it's coming back again. It's coming back again. You have things, little short little things, or big square heads running around. You, you know what? You can't even tell. They're just critters running around. They're running around. People with black eyes. 
they exist. Some of them are in uniform. They wear glasses all the time. You can't even be, the a person can't look in their eyes. I'm trying to scare anybody. I'm just telling you what it is. You're protected anyway. It, it shouldn't give you any fear. Because you're not the ones that's going to have to deal with these things. You're not. Some of you are not built to endure these times. Some of you are not. Some of us are. Some of us have been uh, trained to deal with these times. But it's going to begin in the heavens. Even the world, even the armies of the world are waiting, are waiting on the weather in the heavens to cause a catastrophe so that they can begin the war. That's not theory. That's what I know. And it's hard for people to accept. But that's the way it is. I said that on the Hagmans a long time ago. A celestial happening will be the trigger for the war. A celestial happening. And it will be. And when it begins, it's going to be horrific. That'll be the beginning of the displacement. That'll be the beginning. Now, these straight-line winds that are happening, even before um, devices are turned on, can you imagine... You need to go and look at the damage this previous storm did. So you're going to have to, you guys are going to have to learn. If you want to know what straight line winds are doing, then look at the results of winds that did not reach 100 miles, 150 miles an hour. Look what they did. All you have to do is examine what they did. Look at the hail that was involved that smashed through houses and cars. Can you imagine at 150 miles an hour, an object flying? at that speed, or hell dropping at that speed, it'll eventually, at 150 miles an hour, it will begin to fly in a tight horizontal pattern, which makes it deadly. Most structures won't be able to withstand that type of wind because there'll be debris in the air. See, at 150 miles an hour, it'll certainly pick up debris. So it's not going to be good. But again... I know that the people who believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are protected from these things. You don't believe me? You're still here. And there are things happening right now, things you don't know of. You're still here. And things are happening right now. Radiation readings are off the charts in certain places on the surface. Off the charts in more places in Japan. Accidents have happened in the last month. Nuclear accidents under the ocean. So it's no doubt that there's a, there's a peak we're reaching, a peak. Climate chaos is real. Climate chaos involves both the weather, the people, and celestial happenings all at the same time. And you'll see it. There will be fireworks in July, no doubt. That will be an absolute. July will have fireworks. So will the end of June. It will have fireworks. But prior to that time being completed, it's going to be a great many changes in America. It has to be. There again, though, we're reading all of this in the book of Revelation, so we should be prepared. People are going to want to have answers from you. What are they going to do when they quarantine an area? Because uh, let's just say... Uh, um, let's just say something something old. And you know what? Larvae, these, I keep telling you guys about these ancient larvae that are unthawing. See, when the ice unthaws, so do viruses, ancient viruses. So do ancient bugs. Ancient eggs unthaw. And some eggs can survive that long in ice. They can be preserved. Some organisms can live that long. You, you know what? According to Isaiah 34, there's the war is going to happen. Listen, in the 60th, we know the moon turns to blood, right? We know this. But in Isaiah 34, Isaiah 34, it says, Come near, ye nations, to hear and to hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear. Let all that is therein, the world and all the things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, 
Do you guys hear this? The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon their armies. Do you guys hear that? His fury is upon their armies. His indignation is upon all nations. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast down, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down, as a leaf falleth from the vine, and as a falling fig from a tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon idiom and upon the people of my curse to judgment. You know what? Before the skies roll together as a scroll, the Lord will have utterly laid these armies to rest, which means right now they're plotting. They're plotting. And they will amass their troops in the Middle East. They will attack America. If, the, if, if Israel is attacked, so will America be attacked. The alliances are forming now. They're forming now. No, Godzilla's not coming. But the alliances are forming now. And in Isaiah chapter 34, the only time in the Bible when the skies roll together is during the sixth seal. The skies roll together right before the mighty men and the rich men hide themselves in the rocks and the dens. Now, it's so funny because the Lord said he has utterly destroyed their armies. No wonder they wouldn't hid in their caves. They lost their armies. He never said the armies would hide in the caves, right? Some, the army is missing. And everywhere I read in the Bible when it says the indignation of the Lord is upon us, his indignation means storms come, floods come, fires come, pestilence come, disease comes. When his indignation is upon something, these things begin to happen. But he said it's upon all nations, not one, all nations. And his fury upon all armies. That now for him to say his fury is upon anything, means you're just not going to make it. Game over. God's fury? Are you kidding me? Indignation? I've seen. Fury? He's going to demonstrate it here. Now remember, remember this. Jesus said that a great many people came out of great tribulation. A number that no man can number. It came out of great tribulation. He sealed 144,000. Then we're told that when a certain army came out, 200 component army, one third of mankind was killed. The other two thirds did not repent. That tells you right there. When it said the remnant was a frightened. So you have that remnant, the 144,000. They had to be sealed because they're going to be, still be here on earth and a place will be prepared for them. They are the remnant. They'll be here on earth. So a lot of people are gone. But even before that, these people came out of great tribulation. They came out of great tribulation in the sixth seal. That's when John noticed them. But before the sixth seal, these armies will be destroyed. A great war will have taken place. A great war. The Bible specifically said they came out of great tribulation. Now, where does that mean? What does that mean they were in? What were they in? If they came out of great tribulation, what were they in? They were in great tribulation. You get that? If they came out of great tribulation, they were in great tribulation. Please don't go through life saying, I'm going to get out of this and get out of that and get out of this. No, you need to stand up be a son or daughter of the Most High. Understand that he is your God. The God of all things is your Father. Many people take that statement lightly. He's your Father. The one who speaks life and who can consume all life is your Father. The one who spoke a word and molecules hold themselves together, that's your Father.
these things will melt before him that's your father in heaven that's who you belong to there's nothing to fear absolutely zero to fear that's your father this is a process you know this is a process you're not appointed to his wrath you are not appointed to his wrath he does listen he's not going to make he didn't put you here to to do what you think put you here to die miserably and all this that and the other that's not why you're here you're here making a choice finding your way home discovering what a citizen of the kingdom is overcoming satan so that you don't do the same you're learning how precious the process is you're learning to love your brothers and sisters you're forming bonds in the body of christ you're growing your soul is growing you're growing spiritually you're outgrowing the fallen angels you know, it'd be bad if we just automatically went to heaven without testing and then some of us said, eh, I don't want to be here. We fall just like Satan and his minions did, right? But it just so happens he wants all his children back to him. You see, the Lord had a beautiful thing in mind. But we need to finish our process to get there. Then all evil will be done away with. This is a process. He didn't set you here to torture you. This is not prison. Despite what some people think, this is not a prison. This is a process. Your wounds that you have in your life, had you not had those wounds, you would not have found your way here. You wouldn't have found your way back to the Lord Jesus Christ because things would have been too good for you. You would have been in the world. See, when things are too good for you, you don't seek help. You enjoy what you have, don't you? You would have had a completely different character and the Lord said, no, no. I need to put something in them that so they can find their way home. He did that from the beginning. And you found out that no person could heal that wound, no substance could heal it. Nothing could help that wound until you found Christ and then he began to heal it. You said, what? This is what it was? And it keeps you there with him. It makes you sorrowful on purpose so you don't drift and go astray. Why? Because he loves you. He does not want to lose you. This is not, Revelation is not to torture folks. But many folks do not understand what real evil is. So you have compassion and love in your heart. There's no way you can think like an evil person does. Well, some of you anyway. I'm sure we have spies here. Spies that will say, that will take everything I say and pick it apart and say, yep, he's against God. See, I'm not worried about them either. I'm accountable to the Lord Almighty. That's who I'm accountable to. I'm not accountable to them. So despite what anybody says, the Lord is still my heir. Oh, my God. Jesus is my Savior. He is Lord. That's the way it is. I'm not worried about those people. When they're still condemning and scoffing people, and the pit opens up, and they're laying out in the middle of the yard seeking death but won't find it, for five months, they'll seek death and won't find it. We're not appointed to that. We're not appointed to that. But to those who chose the side of Satan, those are the ones that are appointed to that. When the Lord directs his great army for his camp is great, to burn up everything before them, well, that's them. That's the choice they made. Well, their name is not found in the Lamb's Book of Life because they persecuted the body of Christ while they were here on earth. That's on them. And because they didn't repent. There was no peace, no humility in them. In order to scoff, you have to abandon love itself. You have to pick up the wicked cause, and you have to destroy someone to prove your point of goodness. That is wickedness. You see, in the Bible it says, they would call good evil and evil good. People would think they're doing God a service by getting rid of me and you and everybody else. Satan would leave me alone if I never mentioned Christ, if I never pointed out real scenarios. He wouldn't bother me. He wouldn't bother Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul didn't preach the gospel. But when you start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you tell somebody, hey, Jesus is Lord. Let's go in the scriptures and tell you why and how. And then Satan's all against that. He didn't care if you read the entire Bible. 
so long as you read it and keep your mouth shut. He don't want you to praise the Lord or anything else. If you start doing that, it's going to attack you. You see, he sends spies because he knows the potential of you. He's been watching everybody all their lives. That's what he's been doing. We've helped them out. You know how we've helped Satan out? We mumble, complain too much out loud. He knows what bothers you because you react to every situation, and he'll say, ha, ah, I'm going to use that again and keep this person off balance. But the moment you resist him by not showing emotion to the people who do attack, see, to resist the devil means to not react. You don't convey no terrible emotions because something happened. You're not resisting him. You're feeding him. To resist the devil is not to react to him. But what do we do? We'll say, oh, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Phone call, and then we'll say, didn't I tell you not to call here anymore? You make me sick, and this, and the other, and all this, that. And then you hang up, and Satan says, oh, I got him anyway. That's what he does. Satan watches everybody. The moment you react he's to a lot of people, that notebook contains your triggers. What's that term people use, uh, what gets on their nerves? Okay. He's got the what gets on your nerves book, according to you, because you react too much. You fuss when you start fussing. He knows what's getting to you. You can fuss to your children, and he knows what's getting to you. So he magnifies it through somebody else to tear your world apart. Stop giving him ammunition. Stop reacting to Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You know what he knows about me? You know what to get? I get happy and charged up when I start talking about Jesus Christ. That's what he knows. He does. He knows that. Because I don't react to anything else. I don't react. I'm passionate when I'm speaking. That gives him no ammo. I don't complain. Complaining is useless. See, but we give Satan ammo. We got to stop doing that. We really have to stop doing this. He's watching everything we do. Anyway, where was I? The armies are utterly destroyed, which means there's a war coming. It will come. The weather will also come. You know what? When it says there will be signs in the sun, moon, stars, and in the earth, the stress of nations, the seas, and the waves roaring. Notice there was no separation between the stress of nations with perplexity it went directly into it, the seas and the waves roaring. One sentence. The weather is going to distress the nations also. They won't be able to do anything about it. Even with harp, they're, they're trying desperately to find the right frequency to change certain effects so they can save themselves. Listen, they live on this earth too. You guys know that. They live right here. Hours don't hit. They made one worse. You know we have hypersonic uh, missiles, correct, you guys? They travel at uh, 78,000 miles an hour or, or Mach 10. Do you guys know what Mach 10 is? If something is in space and traveling at Mach 10 and its thrusters are still burning, it's going to speed up big time faster than Mach 10. They are attempting to intercept objects that are coming here, and they're making it worse. They're taking a big object. Smashing it up in smaller objects formed, shooting all over the place. Now it's like a pool gallery out there. Two of the rockets got knocked down by debris they didn't see. It's getting worse. It really is getting worse. Oh, by the way, there's a ratio with the missile launchers between success and failure. And Lord knows we don't need a failure because the debris itself can be deadly. See, they can't use standard fuel, that fuel specially made, to endure that type of temperature. The materials on the things, they have to be specially made. You know what, Guest 502, people talk about, they talk about the camps, but some of those camps have barbed wire pointed outwardly so nobody can get in. Inside those camps are off limits. But they have transit systems, underground transit systems connected to them. Nobody ever observes that. I'm not here 
foreign agenda or anything else. But I do like the facts. Why would you build a prison system where the barbed wire is outward? That's to keep people out, not to bring people in. Do they have incineration units? You bet. Because if a biological attack hit America, they're going to have to incinerate the dead bodies. They're going to have to incinerate them. If something happened with a disease, they will have to quarantine people. They'll have to keep them. They will. But a lot of people get in their minds, they found out America has guillotines. And so they say, oh, well, the guillotines are at the camps. Okay, I'm telling you right now, don't believe that. Don't believe it. A lot of those guillotines were shipped overseas. Lots of them. There's also a virus that's curious that kills a frontal lobe, and they know that a loss of magnetic magnetics to the atmosphere will make a person lose their cognitive functions. In other words, they'll turn into an animal. It's happened before with uh, astronauts or cosmonauts from Russia. It's happened before. If the Earth's magnetic field is altered, so are your thought processes and everything else. Understand that your body is from the earth, from the substance of the earth. Therefore, it's affected by the substance of the earth. A woman's cycle is tied to the cycles of the sun. How many people know that? I'm not going into a long biological thing here. That's 28-day cycle, give or take. So does a woman. Men are tied. Men are tied to things that happen inside the earth. All of us are affected by gamma rays, pulsars, and everything else. Men's testosterone levels are affected by solar flares. But they didn't know that one, did they? Anyway, we're affected by elements both in the cosmos and here on Earth. But we're in a solar system that's perfectly balanced. When I say perfectly balanced, I mean perfectly balanced. Anything that changes in our solar system will also change your mental faculties. But the Lord will sustain you. He's not going to sustain everybody else. In the Bible, it says at one point in time that a man would turn to his brother and kill him right there on the spot. Men would turn against each other, just start killing each other. And blood would fill up the lands. It also said in another part that human beings would be so sparse that he'd make finding another human being more precious than gold, silver. You see, if a, if a man or a woman is more precious than anything that exists on earth, that means there are not many left. Not many left. And if you read Revelation, well, one-third of mankind is killed, two-thirds are left. They didn't repent, and then they, too, were taken out. Because, see, you got the trumpets blowing. All the green grass is burning up one-third of the trees. That's going to kill people. That's going to kill people. Many men died because of wormwood made the waters better. That's going to kill people. A mountain burning as if, as, as it were, a uh, uh, flames cast into the sea. One-third of ships were destroyed. One-third of the creatures who had life in the sea died. That's going to kill people. They were on the ships. All these things are going to kill people. There's going to be a lot of people missing. They're going to be dead. Society will never be the same. That's why in the sixth seal it says a great many people came out of great tribulation. Although the remnant is still here, they are protected. The remnant and those God chose to be here are protected. Now, those things that come out of the bottomless pit, they're only allowed to touch those who don't have the seal up on their forehead, but they were commanded not to touch any green thing. And the 144,000 were sealed in their foreheads. That was found in the sixth seal. Great many people came out of tribulation. Those who didn't repent, they'll endure quite a bit. Now, the mystery of God and seven trumpets should be finished. That's what it says. Paul said those who are alive on the last trump, not the first, not the second, not the third, but the last trump, those who are alive. Be caught up in the air. You see in the seventh trump in Revelation, it says the mystery of God should be finished. 
on the seventh trump. It'll be finished. And I noticed something. I noticed something. After the second trump, after the witnesses were there, after the seventh trump, too, that something happened because the 144,000 were no longer on earth. They were with the Lamb, with the show ever he goeth. You see, at first, the 144,000 were on earth. That's why they had to be sealed. But then when we got to Revelation, they vanished. They were with the Lamb, with the show ever he goeth. But at first, they were on earth. That's why it was told for those things that came out of the bottomless pit. They could touch anything, but they were not allowed to touch anybody with the seal of God in their foreheads. But the Bible also confirms at that time there'll be wickedness in the land. Christians will be hiding. I'm telling you this, don't set your mind on getting out of any trouble. Nobody got out of trouble in World War World War One or World War Two. They were still here. They thought that the rapture was coming then. It didn't. Prepare yourselves. To stand firm in confidence in the Lord. Prepare yourselves. All right, so you got that. Let's go to the weird stuff. These weather conditions and patterns are very strange. A lot of people right now want to know, is the government um, helping it out? Or, or do, do they have anything to do with these weather conditions? Well, I can tell you that they attempted to mitigate it, and it failed. In fact, I think they made it worse. That's by my own observations. They made it worse. See, so when you try to alter the atmosphere, it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like if you stick your finger in a pond that's perfectly still and you put your finger in there, you're going to cause waves. They have to deal with the waves. They have to deal with it. 144,000 was on after the 7th Trump. After the 7th Trump, they, some app to them, they were, um, with the father. Yes, they were. See, when the beast came here, they were not here on earth. When the beast came, they were not here on earth. They were with the lamb. The beast came on the seventh trunk. 144,000 were gone. But there's still a remnant here. It's left. Where? Where are they at? Where are they at? The Bible says it in Revelation where they're at, where the people are at. He says where they are. We'll go through that later. Be prepared, folks. Be prepared. You know what? People are going to depend on you. They really are. They're going to depend on you. They're going to be looking for you. When the trouble starts, it's not going to matter who scoffed you. It's not going to matter who figured what out. You know what they're going to They're going to want to know, how can I be protected from that or from this? That's what they're going to want to know. They don't care about anybody else's differences on a timeline or anything else. They don't care. They're going to come to you in tears because they just lost their home, probably their children, everybody else is dead. Some of you will likely be here to receive those people. You don't see that in regular combat. People's lives torn apart, running, saying, oh, I need God. they need God's help when everything goes wrong because it's real. See, when something turns real, they need God's help. And when they need God's help, it's just like when you break your leg, you're not going to call your neighbor. You want to, you want a doctor. You want to verify that a doctor is going to see you and you will panic about it because you want, you know, that doctor can fix your leg, not your neighbor. That's what happens when these people get in that same condition. Guess what? They're going to automatically see lights in people who can help them. You know why? Because they were the same ones that called you crazy. They already called you crazy. They said, Oh, you're talking about that stuff again. You're talking about Jesus again. You've already been identified to them. You see how that works? They're going to come back to you. You've got to be ready. That's why you can't hate them or be angry at them. you got to be ready. Even the ones that scoffed you. I want you to think of it as this. They simply identified who you are so when the trouble comes, they know who to go to. 
How about that one? Because they will come back. You can't be boastful when they do that and say, oh, now you come back. Don't think you're vindicated either. Don't do that. Okay, we'll talk. Mayor, Mayor, that was a dream. That was a dream. Let me tell you that dream again. Here's how the dream went, for those who don't know. And let's see, how many times? I had this dream at least several times. Seven, exact same dream, seven times. Anyway, here's how the dream goes. At first, at first, the fish were beginning to die. Now, by the way, this dream I had a long, 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 long time ago, but at first the fish began to die, and the species were bigger and bigger. There were fish on the underpasses and so forth. Traffic was still moving, so it couldn't be that bad. All of a sudden, when it was in the fall, in the fall, the sky colors began to change. They were quite beautiful, very beautiful. And people would go out in the nighttime to look at the sky because the cloud, they couldn't believe how beautiful the clouds and things were. Leaves are falling off the trees. At that point, something happened to the economy. When the leaves began to fall off the trees, people doubled up in their homes to attempt to survive because money had become strained. When the money became strained, there were a set of orcas, I believe, orcas or dolphins. They were inverted, straight up and down, on TV in front of some ruins with some columns. It looked like a Roman Roman columns. They were, I mean, straight up and down inverted around the columns. That was on television. After that happened, in the ocean, everybody heard about it too. Something happened in the ocean. People began to look out in the ocean to see what had happened in the ocean. Then an ash cloud moving extremely fast headed my direction, and a great many people transitioned at that point because of the ash cloud. You know, if an ash cloud hits you directly, you'll incinerate almost instantaneously. In other words, you're not going to know what hit you. You're just, you're gone. That's what happened. It came from the ocean, though. That was the weird part about the dream. I've had this dream several times. It's the exact same way every single time. I heard conversations in the dream about the economy, things that we talk about now. So every time, having this dream a long, long, long time ago, and all of a sudden, fish are dying and birds are dying, this, that, and the other. Hearing these stories on the news, just like it was in the dream, it is a little unsettling. But whatever happens in the oceans came across the ocean water. And that was it. That was it. That was that dream concerning the sky. But that was just a dream. But I did have it quite a few times. Quite a few. But I did come across the uh, ocean. Something hit in the ocean. And, and that's what I was thinking in the dream. That, but, but I could never see what hit. I could hear people looking at the horizon over the ocean to see if something hit. But then the ash came seconds after. It was like this. It was like in the distance, way in the distance, people were trying to find out what hit in the water, right? I mean, instantly. They saw it fall. They saw something. I couldn't tell you what hit. But they saw something fall, and they were looking. Not more than 15 to 20 seconds later, an ash cloud. They saw that ash cloud coming. It looked like a wave at first, but it was not. It was an ash cloud, extremely hot. That was the end of that. I'm sure water came with it afterward, but that was an ash cloud. That was a whole lot of debris, and it looked like it was miles high, not like 50 feet or anything. This 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 wall of ash, you know what? It looked just like that dust storm they were showing on television in Iraq. That's what it looked like, but it was miles high. It was miles high. Anyway, that's what I saw. That concerned the color of the sky. So that happened in the fall when the leaves began to fall off the trees. The dreams after that always showed uh, uh, the condition of the world was extremely bright with very little water. 
the ground was parched. The grass was uh, uh, really thin, dusty. The trees' leaves had been folded up, but it's in the dead of summer, no winter. No, I mean, no, uh, no rain whatsoever. Everything was dry. But at that time, people were cursing God for everything that happened. They never took responsibility for anything that happened. Anything that happened. And you know what? I just sent to my spirit that, that uh, things are close. Most of my dreams that I do have, I have a lot. I have them more than once. If I have a dream just one time, I'm not really concerned about it. But when I begin to have dreams, if you had a dream three to ten times, someone is telling you to pay attention. And it's the exact same dream every single time. Do you think that could be the Lord telling you to pay attention? What color did I see in the clouds? It was beautiful. I saw purple and turquoise and uh, pinkish colors. I, it, the, everything in the clouds were changed. It was, it was just very beautiful. It was full of different colors. A lot of purple and pink and uh, a different type of a bluish color. And you know what? I don't know if it was from the, the uh, what was in the atmosphere at that. I just know was at, at, uh, this was near sunset. They were just beautiful and colorful. But they were so beautiful that they caught people's attention. Often they were looking at the sky. A lot of people began to notice the colors in the sky. It doesn't uh, mean that it's an aurora, although I did see some in the distance. But the clouds themselves in the sky was just beautiful at sunset. Many people began to notice it. That's what began the uh, the process began then. Of course, the fish were under bypasses. You know, I'm still looking for fish under bypasses. I really am. When I see some fish... Listen, you all, when I see some fish, a picture of some fish on the news or something like that, under a bypass, I don't know where it was, but I saw it under the bypass. When I see that, then I know what's coming next. I know exactly what's coming next. I don't have timing or anything else, but I know what to watch for. I know exactly what to watch for. Mine are normally a literal type dream. I get prepared literally for dreams because I normally have to endure those things that I'm looking at. See, I was right there when that ash cloud came. That was the end of me and those that were with me. That was the end of us. And I was right there when that ash cloud came. So I'm normally trained in what I must do. I'm normally trained in that. Anyway, anybody else got any more weird questions before we take a break? We're going to take a break. It's, it's, it's uh, 8.50. I'm going to get some coffee, and then we're going to talk about these bands that are coming. I think you should know some things. I'm going to give you something to watch for so you know yourself. Because I could be, you know what, really, if something happens concerning the military forces, I will not be in contact with you. I just won't be in contact with you. And if I'm not in contact with you all, you'll have you'll be stuck with the information you're stuck with. But if you didn't jot it down, or somebody didn't jot it down, or if you didn't take it seriously and it begins to happen, I don't want you in a position to say, oh, I should have just paid attention. I don't like people in that position. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be my worst enemy, but I'd be prepared, please. Because that, the, the worst thing, I, I don't like to see people go through anything. That's a that's a fact. I despise violence. Um, I don't like suffering. I'll do anything to mitigate unnecessary suffering. I really will. And it's you know what? It's really getting close to something. I can feel it internally. The spirit is moving stronger because it's necessary. You're going to need that strength to endure some things that are coming. The Lord works that way. So when we come back, we'll address, we'll talk about these bands out there and see, uh, so you know, so you know for yourself. Now you can discount it, or you can put it in the back of your mind and cast it away. But I know I just want to tell you, I want to let you know. So if it comes to pass, like the term straight line winds that they're using all the time now, if it comes to pass, you're prepared already. 
You don't know what to deal with. So I'll be right back. There we go. You guys can hear me okay? Good. I am back. Yeah, my avatar in is motion. See, the circles go in motion. I'm always in motion. I really am always doing something. I'm in motion, but I'm not a computer program. If I was a computer program, I'd be the worst program on the planet. I really would be. Actually, I'd short circuit myself because I like uh, water and milk, lots of milk. Milk doesn't go good with a computer, by the way. That wouldn't be good. Okay, so folks, um, we do have some bands coming in, bands of uh, stuff, a bunch of junk. I'm going to have to, I have one graphic. Um, I'm going to get it posted somehow just to give you a graphical representation of what we're looking at. I have my way of adding things, so if you look at the graphic hard enough, you can figure things out. I will, you know what, most of the time, I do this a lot. When I say things and write things, I normally say more than one thing in a sentence. In other words, you can pick out little tidbits in there. But the graphic itself, if you can do a little math, will give you type of timeline. But I, I certainly can't put the times up here. Just I'll do a graphic so you can interpret it yourself. No, I'll make one, Christy. It won't be the one BP had. I'll probably send BP-1-2 because he's really good at using commercial optics that are available to him. He knows how to do physics formulas on uh, what's out there. So that'd be good. That'd be good. Anyway, the first thing you guys are going to encounter is an increase in red dust. I don't know if some of you know. You may have noticed some of it if you clean your windows outside your car. Uh, you'll notice red dust out there on your tissue, paper, towel, whatever. It will increase. It'll increase to the point that when it rains, it'll look muddy in places. It will begin to build up, almost like mud. So it will increase over the course of time. After the dust, because see, we're entering a part of space where there are small particles. When this dust comes, a fog, a type of fog will come with it. The dust will actually bond when water evaporates. When it rains, water evaporates. This dust has other particles in it which can bond with the water molecule, which makes them a, uh, just makes their, um, makes them a little heavier, changes its composition really. It'll bond with it and, um, there'll be a tight perpetual fog everywhere. I mean everywhere. It'll be fog everywhere. Clouds will be lower. Clouds will be much lower. They'll become thicker. When the clouds get lower and thicker, so will the jet stream and weather patterns will shift once again. You see, they're already shifting. They're not going to explain to you why. All they're saying on the news is that Folks, we have bad weather, and we don't know what's causing it, but it's probably caused from carbon emissions. Well, that's fine, except there are no buses on, you know, Mars and Venus and these other planets. They're having the exact same problem. Jupiter's having tremendous storms. Tremendous. So it's all. Okay, folks, here's what I'll do. I have very good friends all around the place, right? I mean, let me give you guys a secret. When I'm talking to you guys and something, can you guys hear me okay now? You can hear me okay? I have good uh, good friends and places, right? So when I begin to talk about a subject I shouldn't, that's what happens. You know, when you're talking about, let me, let me explain something to you guys. When you're talking about certain subjects, certain words will key the mainframe. When the mainframe is keyed, that communication line, the computer begins to isolate your conversation, the words you say. It goes through voice recognition, pattern recognition, everything else, so they can properly identify you. At that point, if you have any webcams hooked up to your computer, they begin to use that webcam to see why, while they're searching files in your computer for very specific things. They go through your online accounts and everything else. So 
because I do have friends when I'm talking about a subject I shouldn't communications are terminated right away, aren't they, Angie? And I change the subject. So right now, I'm going to have to change the subject. What I'll have to do is communicate this in another way. But I am going to change the subject. So, knowing that the weather patterns are changing on Earth, you guys have to be very watchful. But most importantly, don't have fear. Don't fear things. You'll be okay, but uh, understand that these things are coming. Now, listen, the news is going to become even more confusing than it is right now. There are going to be a great many deceptive things happening that just don't make any sense. And while these deceptive things are happening, major things will be taking place. They'll be taking place. Certain things I've told you when they come to pass and you see them, understand that you're in the middle of something deeper than what most people comprehend. But it will be the beginning of a true process that you've seen in the book of Revelation. It'll be the beginning. Well, I don't call them that, powers to be, because I don't call them the powers to be. That means they're not in power. There are certain words and combination of words that can, the mainframe or the logic of the system itself looks for certain words and patterns. Then they'll go back and analyze what was said. And if the train goes to something true, your communication is cut. Pure and simple. Understand that Zachariah Ascension had some wrong information. Half of his writings were based on a premise that's not true. That's why I don't use the word Nibiru. That, that word is not hard to use anyway. Because there is no Nibiru. If you want to know about a cycle of something, then you need, what you need to do is research those who documented things for the Egyptians because they felt the grunt of something. And you know what? It's just like the four seasons. We have the four seasons based on the movement of the earth around the sun. We have planetary alignments that they can forecast and predict, correct? because they can see their orbits and calculate their orbits and tell you when there's going to be an alignment or an eclipse or blood moon, correct? They also have further calculations of other objects that have greater orbits. You see, we live in a binary solar system. A lot of people are not aware of that, but we do live in a binary solar system. Do you guys know that, do you guys know something? I'm going to tell you something. Most systems that they have are binary, tritary, and so forth. We are one of very few that just has one sun, but it just so happens that the mathematics do not match. The wobbles and perturbations do not match for us to have one sun. They have concluded that we live in a binary system, and the second sun will be coming back. It's part of its orbit. But when it comes back, so are the other planets. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, because we're going to entertain a great many different different phenomena that we have not entertained before. And I don't want people to get scared, lose their footing, uh, and all this these other things, and have wild thoughts. Here's something very strange for Wednesday. You're going to entertain other life forms. You most certainly will. Don't lose your footing, have a heart attack, or anything else. It's, it's going to happen there will be a type of introduction. I'm just asking you, don't believe them, because Jesus and his, Jesus is not coming back like that. We've been going through Revelation. You guys see the processes. Don't be fooled. When Jesus comes back, the whole world is going to see him. He's not going to come back to a group of people in the desert. And when these other life forms get here, people are going to believe that they are a type of Messiah. Don't believe it. Yes, they have supernatural powers. Yes, they have the power to heal and everything else. But you know why they're lying signs and wonders? Do you know that? 
You know why they're lying signs and wonders? They're not doing it for a good purpose. They're extending the life of people right now. Right now, they're extending the life of people. But the reason why it's a lying sign and wonder is because it's not for a good thing. They're going to present it like it's a good thing. They're going to sit there and tell you they're the Elohims, the people who were sent to make mankind. See, but because people don't study, these things will throw Christians off and say, wait a minute. It says in the, New, in the Old Testament that God said, let us make man in our own image. And that was the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what they say through the, theologians say this. But the original term was the Elohims. Elohims. Elohims take orders from God to do things here on earth. He spoke the world into existence and everything else. There are angels that are in charge of the moon, the moon's movements, the sun. See, they, they, nobody wants you to know these things because they want you to believe in science. Well, I got news for you. Even the DNA and the trees and then the plants are trying to figure out how in the world are they triggered to change. Who's doing this? That's what they want to know. So when they come back and introduce themselves, don't fall for it. Jesus said he's not coming back that way, so don't be deceived. He said every eye is going to see him, not just a small group. Every eye. So if a person says, oh, let's go, he's in the desert. Don't go because everybody's going to see him coming. They're going to know it internally. You know what? It'll be like this. If you go to a reunion and you see a family member you haven't seen in a long time, you instantly recognize that family member. That's how it's going to be. You're going to recognize who Jesus is. You're going to automatically know. You're not going to be fooled. Something internally is going to say that is Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen. Oh, and the, please don't believe Project Blue Bean. Please don't do that. You know, there's something called counterintelligence. Please look up that term and study that term. Project Blue Beam is part of that. Counterintelligence is when the government purposely leaks a lie and then supports the lie, makes up some forms, and then turns it into a conspiracy theory. But what makes it true is that one person said, whoop, the government tried to cover it up. They tried to cover it up. See, all the government has to do is cover up a false story they put out to make it real to the public. Please don't believe in that. The problem is what's coming back is going to be absolutely real, not fake. It's going to be real, not fake. And if you look at the footage on 9-11, you'll notice that the plane penetrated the building. Can I tell you something? There's no plane built on the commercial side that's going to penetrate a building like that. The fuselage is not made to do that. The stresses won't allow for a plane to penetrate. Anyway, I'm not getting into that either. That's man's affairs. has nothing to do with me. You know what? To be honest, it happened. We can't go back in time and change it. We can't do it. So what happened? What we have to do is not be fooled by what's coming. I'm telling you right now, these things can speak directly into your mind. That's going to convince a few people, quite a few people. Don't fall for it. When they begin to heal you from cancers, when they put their hand over your mouth and all your teeth are perfect, don't fall for that. They're going to give you things based in vanity. I'm telling you that now. Don't fall for it. You may say, ooh, that's way out there. Well, let it be way out there. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for that. Those of you who stand firm with Christ, who even right now are skeptical of everybody, you stay that way. You prove all things. Prove all things. You stay your skeptical self. Believe the word of God. Don't listen. Don't put all your faith in any person's mouth. In the words they speak, don't put your faith in that. You better put your faith in the word of Jesus Christ. Don't put your faith in hearsay. Don't you dare put your faith in me. Don't do it. Put your faith in the word of God. 
The only way for you to be sound and secure in your faith is to put your faith in the scriptures, the words of God. Don't sit up and read these new Bibles they're putting out that that get rid of stuff and change everything in the Word of God. Don't you do that. You trust the Scriptures. Don't take any man's words to the bank. Trust the Scriptures. You know what was written? That a wise man is slow to speak and quick to listen. That means a wise man will consider everything he heard, but he'll test all things. He'll test all things. He's not too apt to talk. He'll test all things. You better keep your keep it in that listen. When new doctrines come out, companion Bibles, keep your reading in the Word of God. Keep your reading in the Word of God and His truth. Yeah, we do need critical thinking skills. Absolutely. You know, I have these things in my mind every day. Who's going to fall for this? Who's going to fall for this? You know, it's, it doesn't matter if I know. It matters if you know how to handle the situation. So I'm making you aware of scenarios that nobody else is going to make you aware of. Yes, you can, Kathy. You most certainly can. But they're going to deceive a great many people. There will be an enormous falling away of the faith. They will follow strange doctrine. They will follow these things. They will believe that they are the answer. Let me me clue you in on something. A lot of people are just looking for a scientific explanation to throw the Bible away. I'm, I'm telling you now, they're looking for it. All these people that say, I don't believe in extraterrestrial life and all this, they're lying because in their minds, they think themselves, is something really out there? And when something really comes and fulfills their every question, they're going to follow it too. The truth is in the Word of God. Learn it now because one day this Bible will be banned. They will confiscate it. They will confiscate your Bible. You will not be able to say any Jesus Christ anywhere. If you go out the street and say in the name of Jesus, they're going to arrest you. You're going to have to contend with some of these things. These laws are coming. There are some laws already that will be presented to Congress. And when it passes, anybody who has a public church is going to have to get their message approved. They're going to pressure the church and change the church. And it won't be the, you know, half the churches are not churches right now. A church is a body of Christ. Ecclesia, I believe it is. The collection of people. That's what a church is, a collection of people, not a building. A collection of people who believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And to believe in him means you don't compromise. That's the true body. But these churches that are buildings, and they have to survive because of money, hear me closely, they will conform to the new laws. You think they're going to give up their lifestyle? Because in their minds, they're already downing. They've already compromised. They're taking the people's money and buying a Lexus. That Lexus does not serve the body of God. It serves that one individual. Now, do you really think that's really uh, serving the Lord? No. I'll tell you the truth. Everything I have, I want to serve it with the Lord, and I, I do it. I do it. Some of the peers that I have say, you know what? You are either crazy or a true believer. Because no one takes that much money and does this, that, and the other. I do. I most certainly will. I know how important the time is right now. I know what's going to happen in the days to come. I know that a great many people are going to be deceived. And you know what? Really? That breaks my heart. It does. It breaks my heart. 
it also makes me want to work harder and harder and harder. Because the whole purpose is about my brothers and sisters. To serve Jesus Christ is to serve my brothers and sisters in truth. Not anything made up, not any lie, not any false premise or anything else, but in truth. And the truth is in the word of God. Out of my own lips, I may give warning. Something for you to watch for. But you better trust the word of God. That's important. Because we will entertain things. A lot of people are going to entertain things they thought they wouldn't. And when they're still here, and they weren't raptured at the time that they thought they were going to get taken, they're going to fall apart. That's the problem with times, with trying to get the right time. Because if you get the wrong time and you believe it yourself, and it doesn't happen, you're going to be heartbroken when you're still here. And it's going to take a strong brother or sister to take that individual and say, you know what, don't worry about it. Let's get up and let's go. That's why times are so dangerous. You don't put a time on things like that. Let God deal with his own timing, his own seasons. We can see the signs of the end. But when we get down to details, that is fruitless, very fruitless. I'm not concerned. Did John of Patmos have corns on his toes? I'm not concerned about that. I heard my time that Noah was a mason. Are you kidding? Who? Oh. You see what I'm saying, how people do? And they can dig up stuff and form something and prove it, so they say. This is how people do. This is how they do. This is how Satan does. Satan will get you caught up on a detail to make you miss the entire story. Satan is very slick. Listen, a snake slithers. You don't see a snake every day. You know why? They're hiding, slithering, watching. Snakes have very good timing, too. They know when to strike and they know when not to strike. Yes, Eve was beguiled, enchanted. That, that's one thing they do is they will enchant you. They will enchant you. A lot of people say serpents are hypnotic. They put you in a trance of some type. They get you on their timing and then they act on a different timing to strike you, and it works. Of course, you women out there have been given the gift to see a serpent anywhere he may be. If, if you can surpass your own emotions, you can see clearly. See, women have are given emotions to nurture children. They, too, have a struggle to overcome acting on their emotions, but they can certainly see a serpent. That's why when a woman says, this person is no good, I can feel it. You know what? I always seem to listen to that woman. Now, when a man says it, no, no. If a man says this person is no good and this, that, and the other, well, I'm skeptical of the guy that told me. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you the truth. I'm skeptical of the guy that told me. Because automatically I'm thinking, what was his motive? He's not a woman. What's his motive? I'm very skeptical. When a guy says that, no, 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 something's wrong with that picture. But when a woman says it, because I know they, they say things out of emotion like that, well, I pay attention. Kind of like Moses' wife saving Moses because he forgot something. And God was looking for Moses, and his wife saved his life because he didn't circumcise his son. Remember that? He did not circumcise his son. And his wife saved his life because the Lord was surely going to deal with Moses. That was going to be the end of Moses. It took a woman to save him. People don't tell you stories like that. But you see, we're two different species. Men are aggressive by nature. They're concerned with the bottom line. That's good. Women like details of everything. But see, they have to deal with that. Emotions are good for nurturing and building the nest. But as a woman, they still have to learn to overcome their emotions a lot. That's why they pray a lot. They think harder than men do. That's a fact. Men are worried with the bottom line.
Anyway, I'm not getting in that because I found there are four types of women and 11 types of males. But I'm not going to name them. I told Angie the four types of women. She probably won't remember, but they have four distinct characters. You know, by the way, geneticists said there are 67 species of human beings. Did you guys know that? 67 distinct species. That's a conversation for later. What are men's weaknesses? Go look back at the garden. Eve got herself in trouble. Adam's sitting over there like a goon. And she says, ooh. She, God told Adam and Eve what not to do. Adam lost his mind looking at the woman and did what she said anyway. Adam was sitting over there brainless, forgot everything God said. He was looking at Eve. That's what he was doing. Oh, this comes, this comes from my trusted one. So what if God said, don't eat of the tree of life? I have gone nuts. Look at Eve. That's, that's a man for you. Men have to constantly check their focus. They have a hard time focusing when a woman comes around, although a woman can be the backbone, backbone of a man. You see, a man is the strength of that partnership. But a woman who devises evil causes trouble for both. A woman who cannot tame her emotions and overcome her flesh can break down the entire system. Even when God cursed Adam and Eve, he did not curse Adam. He cursed Eve. He did not curse Adam. He cursed Eve in pain to birth, and he cursed her with a desire to rule over her husband, but she wouldn't be able to. You know what he cursed with Adam? He didn't curse Adam at all. He cursed the ground because of Adam. Adam was not cursed. The ground was. Eve was cursed. She was cursed in childbirth. And she was cursed to with the desire to want to rule over Adam, but she couldn't. She would desire her husband. If you look at the ancient writings, you'll see it's a lot more to it than that. She wanted to rule over him. And most women, what are they trying to do? I'm not getting into that. That's a couple things. You guys don't write me bad emails. I get enough of those already. Anyway. Observation can make you smart in your trials. All you have to do is watch. If you watch, wisdom comes. If you try to squirm out, you get no wisdom, and you're doomed to repeat it again or go through worse circumstances. Okay, any more questions? It is 930 already. Can you believe that? Anybody got any more questions? Anybody? I feel like... Uh, um, uh, a reject Dr. Phil talking about this. Isn't that the guy, the, the Dr. Phil dude, the guy or something like that? I think I've heard that before. They say jokes about what they used to. Anyway, I am, uh, I am though, folks, I'm concerned. So out of my concern, I share things with you. You know, the word says if a prophet, if, if anybody shares something with you and it does not come to pass, don't trust that prophet, right? It's what it says. But if somebody tells you something and it comes to pass, then hear them. Hear them. That's very simple. I use that rule all the time, even with myself. You think I'd listen to myself if I was wrong? Nope. I tell myself to shut up all the time. Hush, shut up. However, the spirit of the Lord, the true spirit of the Lord does not lie. It's never wrong. I want you guys to know that because you're going to read it. Listen, you're going to meet a great, there are so many deceiving things coming. It's ridiculous. You're going to meet people who are going to say things that are just wrong. They don't apply to you. And they're going to swear by the heavens and earth, which they shouldn't do. That is true and it's from the Lord. You're going to be dealing with a lot of things like that. You don't crucify the person. 
even a person who does anything like that. They could be your brothers and sisters. They could be your brothers and sisters. So then we embrace them with the love of Christ. You see, a lot of people say, well, you can love them with the love of Christ. No, love them with your own love. Because if you're a real Christian, the love of Christ is inside of you. Love them with your own love. I don't like when people throw off like that. I'm gonna going to embrace you with the with the love of Christ, but I got a problem with you, but I'm going to no, don't do that. You either love someone or you don't, there's no in between. And a great many people don't understand what love is in the first place. They think love is some type of weird emotion. It's not. It's a power that enters you. A seed that God placed within you. It's a power that stirs emotions. It does not hurt. Doesn't make you regret anything. It's a power that stirs within you. I was going to what, Peter? Gonna talk about people protecting their money a few sessions ago. Well, Peter, they are protecting their money. They're gonna lose it. Their silver and gold. It's, you know what? It's as simple as this. If you, if your safety resides in the resources of the earth, right, outside of God's word, then you're just messing yourself up. See, when they the dollar, international systems, they're counting on one nation being moved out of the way. I'll leave it up to you to guess which one. You know what, Lonnie? I keep my listen. I keep my money in the bank. You know why? If the money fails, the banks are going to fail. And if the banks fail, stores are not going to be able to do transactions because the software won't work. And if that happens, what good is money in the first place? I thought of the whole thing one time. And people say, well, we can trade stuff with silver and gold community to community. Listen, they have special UAVs that can detect gold, silver, and platinum. They'll just come and take it. It'll be a curse to you because it will draw danger to your house. But we're not appointed to his wrath. We're not appointed to his wrath. I don't put my hope in anything in this world. The Lord has places prepared already. He has places prepared. But if you trust in your substance, you're going to be hurt. You're going to hurt yourself. Because you're going to trust in it. You're going to be able to feel comfortable that you have it. And there's a shortage of gold and silver with the government right now. See, a lot of people think they have gold and silver in their safety deposit boxes and different places, and the government has taken all that. Soon people are going to find out that they have no gold and silver. What's the question? Uh, Kathy has a question. What was Kathy's uh, question? Where's Kathy at? Kathy, question. Okay, you guys are telling me that Kathy has a question, but there's no question. Michael, off the subject, is there anything with blood types like RH? Well, yeah, there are Irish blood types all over the place. What they've done was, it's not really the blood type they're looking for. It's something in the DNA. The blood type kind of gives a clue of who has certain types of DNA. You know what? By the end of the year 2015, they will have everyone's DNA. In fact, they have, listen, I'm going to tell you something. There are software systems out there right now that are on the market that you can buy. And a lot of people are getting curious about who their ancestors are. So they said, you know what? Here's a good way we can get DNA. We can call, put the kit on the market and people can extract their DNA there and load it into the computer and it will upload and we can have their um, blood type and DNA. 
we can get a sample of their DNA and just have the have the small device figure out the code right there at the uh, uh, consumer's home, and you're good to go. Do you know that's on the market? Hope you guys know it's on the market. It goes to this ancestor program. Everybody wants to find their ancestors, and so they're freely giving um, research people their DNA. They really are. Here's something funny, too. There are hand recognizers that they're beginning to introduce. Well, see, they found a way to extract your DNA without you knowing it. Anyway, they're doing all these things. But when it comes to money and resources in this earth, here, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Here's a practical thought. Suppose you had food supplies in your house. Right? You have food supplies and everything else. In your house, you're good to go. Your weapon storage bins are there, your bunkers set up and everything. Meteors come and burn up your whole neighborhood and your house. Well, then what? What if a call comes out and they say, evacuate Texas? You have to evacuate Texas. Texas is being targeted, and you have 20 minutes to evacuate certain parts. Of, let's just say you have six hours to evacuate Texas. How many people are going to stay and get blown up? What good were your resources then? What I'm saying is that you have to put in your mind, I'm going to have to be mobile. I'm going to have to have my ears open to the Holy Spirit because the Lord will take care of you if you listen to him. But if you listen to your – if you lean onto your own understanding – you're going to be in trouble. doesn't mean you're condemned, but you're going to have one of those pump knots on your heads from not listening. Have your ears open to the Lord. A long time ago, I told people, be ready to move within 36 hours if something happens. That was not a joke. Be ready to pack up and move in 36 hours. Now, for people with families and so forth, that's something you could prepare for. Make sure that you mentally think that through. And you know what? When you have to move within 36 hours, you're not going to take your couch, your substance, or anything else. That's not going to happen. If you have to move within 36 hours, wherever you live at is not going to be there when you get back. Now, in some cases, because it's going to be like this, they're going to have warnings. You're going to have to, you, you're going to be um, taken to certain locations. The trouble will pass and you'll go back home. That's going to happen, too. I'm telling you, that's going to happen. That's going to happen nationwide in, in a lot of places. Now, all those people that would resist and say, I'm not moving anywhere, they won't go back to their homes. I want you to remember something. There's still good people in the government. They have to get rid of them first before they can take over anything. There's too many soldiers that would say, no way, Jose, you're not doing that. They're waiting on a catastrophe. Understand that. They can't go ahead with anything without a catastrophe. There are too many good people in the system. Even some of the bad people are good at heart. They're not going to sit there and suffer anybody to destroy their neighbors or anybody else. I just want you to understand that. So it has to be chaos. For this new system to rise, the first one has to be destroyed. It, the people have to be destroyed. The opposition has to be destroyed. Everybody has to worship Satan. In these scenarios, you keep your ears open to the Lord, to the Holy Spirit. Listen, the Holy Spirit will direct and guide you if your ears are open. You know how you listen to the Holy Spirit? You turn down your own thoughts. That's how you do it. Turn down your own thoughts. Learn to trust in the Creator. Because if something does happen, most people will have 36 hours to move. Some will have less time. Some will have less. But you got to understand that Jesus is real. The Holy Spirit is real. God, our Father, is real. His, his guidance and direction is very good. It's flawless. But we have to learn to listen. If you trust in your own wisdom and understanding, you are doomed. I can tell you that now. You're doomed. Trust in him. Trust in him. And a, a, a war will likely be triggered 
or precede a calamity that would have a 100% probability of taking effect. If, if small meteorites began to fail, you can bet your bottom dollar there'd be a missile launch. They'd mingle those missiles in with the fallen debris. It's hard to track it that way. See, if missiles began to fall, or if uh, comets began to fall, meteorites and so forth, it would begin to overwhelm the satellite systems. They could easily launch an ICBM anywhere. Because you have so many tracks on the radar. And an ICBM going up and then coming right back down would be very difficult to differentiate between hot rocks falling into the atmosphere. That would be the camouflage for perfect missile strike. And we know by reading Isaiah 34 that the Lord's indignation is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. Now, his indignation carries what? Storms and earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and everything else. That's what his indignation carries. His fury is death. But his indignation is upon all nations. In Isaiah 34, before the sky rolls together as a scroll, before the host of heaven falls to earth, or the stars fall to earth like figs shaken from a, a fig tree. So this earth is about to change by his indignation, which are normally when his indignation is mentioned in the Bible, armies are defeated. Great calamities hit a land and everything else. Plagues begin to happen. Disease Manifest everywhere, pestilence is all over the place, that's his indignation. But his fury is utter destruction. Trust the word of God, it won't lead you in the wrong direction. It won't lead you in the wrong direction. Peter concerning Australia, when you see Assets begin to move out of Australia, away from Australia. Well, then, you know, that would be your ticking clock. But, folks, it's been real here today. We only got one warning. One warning. I can't talk about that subject, but I certainly will write about it. How about that one? You have to know these details. You're going to have to know. Okay, that's why you get everything you can get now. And you cherish every day that God gives. Every day he gives is almost like a reprieve. It's a severe blessing. You can also demonstrate to other people the kingdom of the Lord with every day you're given. I don't wake up every day and say, Lord, thank you for waking me up. No, I don't do that. In my mind, it's another day I can do something for him, which is to do something for you, but to do it in truth. To do it in truth. Some days we wake up, we're glad because we, if had we not woken up, we would have been condemned. People do like the sun go down in their anger. People fail to get a situation right. People have fallen asleep in an unforgiven state. They would have been condemned. Every day is an opportunity to serve the Lord our God in truth, in his truth. That's a good thing. Folks, I love you. I got to go. God bless you, and I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. I'll be okay. My people looking out for me everywhere. And we all do the same thing. And we do love the Lord our God. Some people won't admit it to the public because they have to stay in position longer than I do. But they do love the Lord. We do look out for each other. So people, God bless. And I shall talk to you tomorrow, hopefully. Nope, we're going to be streaming Pastor Paul. I mean, talk anyway. God bless.